1979, a film that would come to define both the sci-fi and horror genre was released. Alien. In this video essay, I'll be analysing why Alien is considered by so many to be one of, if not the best, horror film ever created, so you can apply this to your own work. After doing some research into why other video essayists believe this to be a great film, many of them commented on the themes of sexuality. They are quick to mention how the process of the alien's conception is an allegory for rape, how the facehugger penetrates the victim by impregnation via the throat, how it is without consent and the host is forced to give birth to this alien against their will, this all to provoke an instinctive disgust towards the creature. Now, do not get me wrong, the use of theme in storytelling really can add something extra to the work, and the allegory for rape in this film is a great example to prove that, but that is just it. It adds something extra, an icing on the cake to improve upon an already great film. As per usual, I believe these people have been overthinking why Alien is such an iconic horror film, and the real reason is far simpler than many would have you believe. The reason is this. The essence to all great horror is the fear of the unknown, and the film Alien has mastered that fear of the unknown. Now, how can I prove this statement? Well, here's one reason. If you were to watch a horror film based in the modern day, there will be something almost all of them lack. To find out what that is, let's look at Alien. We first have our inciting moment of horror where they find the derelict ship 25 minutes into the action. Before that, nothing goes wrong. We are simply shown the everyday lives of our characters, yet despite this, there is still a certain dread and discomfort looming over the first 25 minutes of the film. What Alien has that few other horrors have is this, an unknown setting. I believe something that holds horror movies based in the modern day back is that feeling of familiarity. When we see people wearing modern clothes, living on a street with neighbours and part of a society that closely resembles or is our own, it gives us a sense of comfort as the setting is something we are very familiar with. All good horrors have a mysterious antagonist, but not only does Alien have a mysterious antagonist, it also has an exceptionally unhomely setting that helps to add to the mystery and discomfort. I think Ridley Scott knew full well that the essence to creating truly great horror lies not in the moment of fright, but in the build-up beforehand. It's for this very reason I'm not a massive fan of the horror genre. The problem most horror films suffer from is the fact so many of them are so desperately unintelligent. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind feeling fear or suspense, I think they are both great tools at every writer's disposal, but when you have a film that in its entirety revolves around purely just frightening the viewer, it can come off as quite cheap, or at least it does to me. To prove this point, I'm going to show you a few clips. Now the first one is from the trailer to The Conjuring. So while you're watching this, ask the question, why is this a bad moment of horror? Do you want to see them? Yeah. When the music stops, you see them in the mirror standing behind you. Now, don't get me wrong, that clip is scary, it's just the wrong kind of scary. The problem is this, the core meaning behind that whole scene was not to make us think, it was not to add an element of mystery or advance the plot, the purpose of that scene was purely to build towards that jump scare. Now granted, that scare didn't make it to the final cut, at least I think it didn't because I'm too much of a pussy to actually watch the film, but this is the epitome of how to do horror badly. Now how do you do horror well? Let me show you what is in my opinion the best horror scene ever created. It's something I'm willing to bet would have been on nobody's first, or even second guess, but when you watch it, you will totally understand why it's on mine. 
It's actually not from a horror film at all, but another science fiction one. It was created in 1968 by the master of his craft, Stanley Kubrick. It is, of course, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, in this scene, there is no jump scare, and the audience does not expect one, either. But despite that, it is still a terrifying scene. I kid you not, in doing research for this video, I rewatched this scene, and it genuinely made me cry because of how masterfully crafted it is. So why is it scary? Because it makes you think. I appreciate if you don't know the backstory to this scene, it's a little difficult to understand, but the reason to why this is terrifying lies not only in the brilliant music, but in the thoughts that go through the viewer's head. There is a monolith on the moon. It is jet black with perfect proportions and not a single defect on it. It is not naturally occurring. But the thing is, humans are the only ones to have ever visited the moon. Only we could have put it there. But we didn't. This black monolith defies everything we understand about our universe. It is impossible. It physically should not exist. Yet it does. I feel this scene right here underlines the critical point you must understand in order to make a truly great moment of horror. Make the audience think. The reason that scene from The Conjuring was bad was because it did precisely the opposite of that. This I feel is the main reason why Alien is such an incredibly good horror, because as a film it has something few other horrors have. It challenges the viewer's intelligence. Now, how specifically does Ridley Scott achieve this? Well, one way is by how he expertly uses the old phrase, show, don't tell. When we first arrive on the asteroid, there is a derelict alien ship. We are not told who created it, how it crashed, or why everyone on board died. We are simply shown. The closest we get to being explicitly told what happened to the crew is this line. Now, honestly, I love this line, because even though he is answering the question the audience wants answered, he answered it in a way that only creates more questions and adds to the mystery and thusly creates horror. This right here is the pinnacle of great horror dialogue. Now, the rule of show don't tell is usually true when you write in any form of fiction. However, I believe that when it comes to horror, the rule of show don't tell is more vital than in any other genre. To prove to you how this is true, close your eyes and imagine this. A girl has escaped from a mass murderer's lair. She describes to a police officer the depravity of the room she was kept in, the cold, sweeping air, the harsh, sharp rock she slept on that was drenched in blood that wasn't her own. Imagine that room. Now, here is the thing. If that girl were instead to show a picture of that room, it would have been far less terrifying, wouldn't it? 
The reason why, the description of the room triggers your imagination far more than the picture ever could. This is something few horror directors seem to understand. So, in conclusion, the reason Alien is such an iconic horror film is because it challenges the audience's imagination in a way that no film had ever done before or since. Thanks for watching today's video. Today I have created something a little different. A Patreon page where if you choose to, you can support me creating these videos. If you enjoy these video essays and would like to support me in creating them, then please click that link in the description. On this page you will find many rewards and goals that I believe will pique your interests. As for rewards, if you choose to donate, you will be allowed to take part in creating these videos and suggest the points I cover. If your suggestion is used, you will be called out by me by name in that video for helping me make it. You will also be credited in the description and end credits of every video regardless of how much you donate. Your video suggestions will carry far more weight than anyone else's, you will get to watch all of my videos one week before anyone else, and also exclusively for the higher tier donators, I will personally critique 10,000 words of your writing. Whether that be the opening of a novel to a collection of short stories, it's up to you. As for goals, I have it so that at $200 I will buy a good quality camera and start making writing advice videos. In these videos, I will straight up make guides on how to write good dialogue, how to create compelling characters, and anything writing related. Also, if we reach $300, which will be insane by the way, but if we do that, I will start creating movie reviews. Anyway, thanks for watching today's video, please do check out my Patreon page in the description, and I will see you guys next time on The Closer Look.